Approaching the milestone of turning 60 this year, I find myself reflecting deeply, especially since welcoming my first grandchild three years ago. Over the years, I've encountered a diverse array of individuals from various corners of the globe. Among them, none quite compare to my wife. Perhaps it's the significant age gap between us, she being at a cade younger, that imbues our relationship with its unique dynamics. Her tendency to prioritize her own interests, often at the expense of others, is a trait I've observed consistently. It seems she has a proclivity for taking the path of least resistance, regardless of its ramifications for those around her. Additionally, in moments of contention, she possesses a remarkable level of assertiveness and persistence, characteristics that have remained unchained yet despite our discussions aimed at fostering change. Admittedly, I've grown accustomed to navigating her idiosyncrasies, attributing them to the complexities of human nature. However, recent events have shattered this complacency, prompting a revaluation of our relationship dynamics. Let's rewind the clock three years to a pivotal moment in our family's narrative. My son, having completed his studies at a military academy, embarked on the journey of parenthood with the birth of his first child. As he and his wife grappled with the challenges of new parenthood, financial strain became an inevitable reality. It was during this juncture that they approached us with a proposition. Would my wife be willing to provide childcare for their infant son during weekdays while they tended to their professional obligations? In exchange, they offered a generous monthly stipend, acknowledging the sacrifice such an arrangement would entail. Initially apprehensive, I harbored reservations about entrusting the care of my beloved grandchild to my wife, whose predisposition toward self-interest gave me pause. However, swayed by familial duty and the impending freedom of retirement, we acceded to their request, albeit with a degree of trepidation. As fate would have it, my son's family soon took up residence in close proximity to our own abode, facilitating a seamless transition into our newfound roles as primary caregivers. Watching my grandson take his tentative first steps, evoking memories of my own son's infancy, stirred a profound sense of nostalgia and sentimentality. On that particular day, my agenda was quite packed with various tasks awaiting my attention. Yet amidst the hustle and bustle, I felt a strong desire to carve out some meaningful time to bond with my grandson. With this intention in mind, I allocated approximately an hour before my impending departure to engage in playful activities with him. Together, we embarked on an imaginative game of pretend chase, traversing the nooks and crannies of the house while he practiced his budding walking skills. Amidst our laughter and excitement, we reveled in the joy of playtime, surrounded by his cherished toys. However, the tranquility of our bonding session was abruptly interrupted by the distinct sound of the front door swinging open. Curious to ascertain the cause of the disturbance, I made my way to the entrance, expecting the arrival of a visitor. Much to my surprise, it was not an arrival but a departure. My wife was stepping out. Initially assuming she was attending to a mundane household chore, I awaited her swift return. However, as the minutes ticked by without her reappearance, a sense of apprehension began to gnaw at me. Five minutes turned into ten, ten into thirty, and still, there was no sign of her return. Concerned about her prolonged absence, I reached for my phone, intent on seeking clarification. Expressing my need to depart soon due to prearranged commitments, I implored her to expedite her return. Despite her assurances of a prompt homecoming, her absence persisted, leaving me in a quandary. Reluctantly, I reached out to my friend, notifying him of the unexpected turn of events and the necessity to alter our plans. Though understanding, the prospect of canceling our hangout weighed heavily on me, casting a shadow of frustration despite the assurance of his support. Finally, in the late afternoon, my wife made her belated return. Though initially relieved, my relief swiftly transformed into ire as I confronted her about her prolonged absence. Disappointed by her lackadaisical attitude and dismissive response, I couldn't help but express my frustration at her apparent disregard for our agreed-upon responsibilities. Her nonchalant demeanor and failure to acknowledge the inconvenience she had caused only served to exacerbate my frustration. Despite my desire to address the issue forthrightly, I exercised restraint in the presence of our daughter-in-law, opting to preserve familial harmony rather than escalate tensions. Yet, as my wife seamlessly assumed the role of a diligent caregiver in the eyes of our daughter-in-law, I found myself grappling with a sense of injustice. Though tempted to speak out, I chose to remain silent, mindful of the delicate balance between asserting accountability and maintaining familial cohesion. 
In retrospect, the incident served as a poignant reminder of the intricacies inherent in familial dynamics and the importance of open communication in addressing grievances. Though resentment lingered, I resolved to navigate the situation with grace and patience, harboring hope for a more harmonious resolution in the future. In order to avoid causing a scene, I chose to remain silent, but it didn't take long for my suspicions to be validated. It became evident that my wife had no intentions of fulfilling her duty to care for her grandson in the mornings. Whenever my daughter-in-law arrived with Robbie, my wife would briefly appear to welcome them and usher the child inside, but beyond that initial interaction, her involvement with Robbie throughout the day was minimal. After placing him in the living room under my supervision, she would disappear, only re-emerging a few minutes before Robbie was due to be picked up. Each time she left the house, I would call her out on her absence only to receive the same empty reassurances that she wouldn't be gone for long. However, it quickly became clear that these promises were far from the truth, as she was absent for the majority of Robbie's stay at our place. When I confronted her about her lack of commitment to watching him, she retorted defensively, claiming that she never agreed to such responsibilities and that Robbie was solely my responsibility as his grandfather. Her response stung, as she accused me of abandoning my own grandchild by expecting her to fulfill her duties. She seemed to believe that simply playing with Robbie and putting him down for a nap were sufficient tasks, dismissing the broader responsibilities that come with being a grandparent. Despite her claims of shared responsibility, it was evident that I was the one primarily responsible for Robbie's care. As tensions rose and our argument intensified, it became clear that my wife was unwilling to budge from her stance. With her offer to watch Robbie unalterably made, I found myself unexpectedly thrust into the role of babysitter during my retirement a reality I had never anticipated. Her arguments lacked coherence, particularly her insistence on shared responsibility when the burden of care fell disproportionately on my shoulders. Moreover, her handling of the payment for watching Robbie was deeply unfair. While my daughter-in-law paid her for this service, she kept the vast majority of the funds for herself, leaving me with a mere fraction. In truth, I was the one shouldering the responsibility of caring for Robbie all on my own while my wife unjustly profited from the arrangement. The disparity in our contributions and her disregard for fairness left me feeling frustrated and disheartened, wondering how she could justify such inequity. When I confronted her about taking a disproportionate share of the money, her response was dismissive and self-justifying. She asserted that her contributions to household chores such as cooking, cleaning, and laundry warranted a larger portion of the payment. According to her, it was only fair that she received a greater cut as she was graciously allowing me to have any portion at all. In response, I scolded her, pointing out that she was essentially using my retirement funds to cover these expenses, questioning why she should also receive additional compensation. Her response was haughty and self-righteous, asserting that her increased workload since Robbie's arrival justified her claim to a larger share. She insisted that the retirement funds were a separate matter entirely, emphasizing her belief that she should be compensated for the additional effort she was putting in. It felt like I was banging my head against a brick wall. No matter how logical my arguments, she remained obstinate and unyielding. As frustration mounted, I realized the futility of further argument. At my age, I shouldn't have to waste my energy on such trivial disputes. However, this wasn't the end of her troublesome behavior. When the weather improved, I was reluctant to remain cooped up indoors all day with Robbie. We began to venture out, enjoying walks hand in hand and frequenting the park where Robbie particularly relished his time on the playground. It was during one of these park outings that I encountered Evelyn, an amiable woman who, like me, was caring for her grandchild. Despite being only a few years older than me, Evelyn exuded a grandmotherly aura, accompanied by her granddaughter. Her youthful appearance belied her status as a grandmother, a fact made evident only by the presence of her grandchild. It was a fortuitous coincidence that we found ourselves at the same park with our respective grandchildren and our chance meeting led to an instant connection. We struck up a conversation, exchanging stories about caring for our grandkids, what they enjoyed, what foods they preferred, and the games we played together. Robbie, in particular, relished the company of other children, and he thoroughly enjoyed interacting with Evelyn's granddaughter. Our bond deepened, and before parting ways, we exchanged phone numbers, making plans to coordinate future park outings with our grandkids. One day, I received an enthusiastic call from Evelyn, who shared news about an upcoming kids' class at the library where she volunteered. This class focused on sensory development, aiming to hone the five senses of young children. 
With excitement, she extended an invitation for Robbie to join, mentioning her own plans to attend with her granddaughter. Delighted by the opportunity, I eagerly accepted, anticipating a memorable experience. True to Evelyn's description, the class proved to be a hit. The room buzzed with activity as children engaged with 3D puzzles and interactive exhibits, seamlessly blending education with entertainment. Witnessing Robbie and Evelyn's granddaughter immersed in the activities filled me with joy and nostalgia. Such innovative learning experiences were scarce during my son's childhood, underscoring the remarkable advancements in child development. Expressing my gratitude to Evelyn for introducing us to the class, I inquired about its frequency. Learning that the library hosted weekly sessions, I wasted no time in enrolling Robbie for future classes. Thus began our Wednesday tradition, with Robbie eagerly anticipating each session. On other days, we continued our cherished outings to the park, enjoying the simple pleasures of nature and play. Initially, Evelyn and I had chosen different class days, but the library's bustling parking lot prompted a practical solution. Recognizing the convenience of carpooling, I offered to drive Evelyn and her granddaughter, thereby aligning our class days. This arrangement not only eased the parking dilemma, but also fostered a sense of camaraderie. Grateful for our newfound friendship, Evelyn reciprocated with heartfelt gestures. From baked treats to hand-knitted mittens, her kindness knew no bounds. Our bond flourished over shared experiences, and for six months, life seemed idyllic. However, our harmonious routine was shattered when my wife intervened. One fateful day, while at home with Robbie, my wife's sudden departure took an unexpected turn. Instead of her usual errands, she made a beeline for Evelyn's residence, accusing her of orchestrating an affair with me. A tumultuous scene ensued as my wife hurled baseless accusations, tarnishing Evelyn's character with unfounded allegations of infidelity. It became apparent that my wife had misconstrued our innocent friendship, presuming it to be something illicit. Her unfounded suspicions cast a dark shadow over our once serene existence, thrusting us into a tumultuous ordeal, fraught with misunderstanding and mistrust. Evelyn's husband emerged from their home, drawn by the commotion. My wife wasted no time in explaining her unfounded suspicions, alleging that Evelyn and I were engaged in an illicit affair. She demanded that he keep a vigilant eye on his wife from then on, shifting blame onto him for what she perceived as transgressions. With escalating fervor, she pointed fingers, berating him for his supposed ignorance of Evelyn's actions outside the home. It was a surreal moment, witnessing my wife's baseless accusations and escalating hysteria. Her loud protest reverberated through the neighborhood, staining what was once a peaceful enclave with discord. Amidst the chaos, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for Evelyn, caught in the crossfire of my wife's irrational tirade. Knowing her as a person who valued tranquility, seeing her embroiled in such turmoil was deeply unsettling. Evelyn's husband attempted to interject, offering an explanation that Evelyn had been caring for their granddaughter during her absences. However, my wife remained steadfast in her convictions, her outbursts showing no signs of abating. Her relentless accusations persisted, spilling over into the following day. It was then that Evelyn reached out to me, seeking clarification on the events that had transpired. In a somber tone, she recounted the tumultuous encounter, expressing her bewilderment at my wife's unwarranted accusations. Feeling a surge of remorse, I profusely apologized for my wife's behavior, assuring Evelyn that I had been unaware of her actions. I was at a loss to comprehend the motivations behind my wife's erratic behavior and was deeply troubled by the distress it had caused Evelyn. In response to my offer to intervene and resolve the situation, Evelyn cautioned against further involvement, fearing it would only exacerbate my wife's volatile state. She suggested that it would be prudent for us to cease communication and erase each other's contact information, opting to distance herself from the turmoil. With a heavy heart, I acquiesced to her request, acknowledging the need to prioritize her peace of mind. Never had I anticipated finding myself at the center of such a public spectacle, my wife's accusatory outburst echoing through the neighborhood, staining the tranquility with a palpable sense of embarrassment. Oblivious to the storm brewing within my own home, I offered one last heartfelt apology to Evelyn before ending our call. She had become more than just a fellow grandparent. Our bond transcended our shared duty of caring for our grandchildren, blossoming into a genuine friendship. Yet, amidst this camaraderie, my wife's actions served as a reminder of the unpredictability of life. It was disheartening to witness something beautiful unravel at her hands. And the ripple effects of her actions weren't confined to Evelyn and her family. They permeated our own household disrupting the calm. 
As my wife returned from her tumultuous visit to Evelyn's, her agitation was palpable, coinciding with my daughter-in-law's arrival to pick up Robbie. With a sense of urgency, my wife summoned us all to the kitchen table, leaving me bewildered about her intentions. Seated in perplexed silence, we awaited an explanation, unaware of the storm about to unfold. My wife's accusations, leveled with unwavering conviction, painted a damning picture of infidelity. Her evidence, innocuous snapshots of Evelyn and me, was twisted to fit her narrative, each photo scrutinized for supposed indiscretions. With each wild accusation, the tension in the room grew thicker, suffocating us in its intensity. My daughter-in-law's incredulous interruption only added to the surreal atmosphere as we struggled to comprehend the gravity of my wife's accusations. In her fervor, my wife spared no detail, weaving a tale of deception and betrayal. Her portrayal of Evelyn as a manipulative seductress, using her grandchild as a pawn, left us speechless, grappling with the enormity of her accusations. As she awaited our reactions, her arms crossed defiantly, I couldn't help but feel a sense of disbelief. It was surreal, watching her spin a web of lies, oblivious to the havoc she had wreaked. As my son and daughter-in-law silently turned their accusing gazes towards me, I felt a crushing weight settle over me. Their eyes seemed to plead with me, questioning how I could possibly be implicated in such a scandalous accusation. It tore at my heart to see them view me through the lens of betrayal, labeling me as a cheating old man. Despite knowing the truth, I found myself at a loss for words in the face of my wife's vehement accusations. Every attempt to protest or defend myself seemed futile against the torrent of her accusations. It was as though I was rendered speechless by the sheer absurdity of the situation. Summoning what little resolve I could muster, I offered a feeble defense, recounting the innocuous circumstances of my interactions with Evelyn. We had simply met at the park where our grandchildren played, and later attended a kids' class at the library together. Yet my explanations fell on deaf ears, drowned out by the deafening roar of my wife's accusations. Her response was nothing short of a verbal onslaught, each accusation more venomous than the last. She painted me as a weak-minded fool, easily swayed by the supposed machinations of another woman. In her eyes, Evelyn was the embodiment of temptation, luring me into a web of deceit with nothing more than a few cookies. As my wife's tirade continued, it became evident that she was not merely jumping to conclusions, but pole vaulting to them. Every aspect of our interactions with Evelyn was scrutinized, twisted into further evidence of my supposed infidelity. It was a surreal and disheartening realization to be perceived as a villain in the eyes of the person I loved most. Despite my best efforts to reason with her, my wife remained obstinate, refusing to entertain any explanation that contradicted her beliefs. Frustration welled within me as I reiterated the innocence of my interactions with Evelyn, yet my words seemed to fall on deaf ears. I refused to sit here and be labeled as a cheater and a liar, I asserted, my voice trembling with a mix of indignation and desperation. Your baseless accusations are completely unacceptable. You're making wild assumptions without a shred of evidence. But my wife's tirade showed no signs of abating. With each passing moment, her accusations grew more outlandish, each claim more preposterous than the last. It was as though she had constructed a fantastical narrative in her mind, one that bore no resemblance to reality. Summoning my last vestiges of patience, I made one final attempt to set the record straight. Evelyn is just a friend, I emphasized, the words falling like lead in the charged atmosphere of the room. We met innocently enough at the park, where Robbie and her granddaughter struck up a friendship. Our interactions have been nothing more than companionship and shared activities with our grandchildren. But my wife's response was swift and cutting. I've never known a cheater to admit their guilt so readily, she retorted, her voice laced with scorn. You're just like all the others, weaving elaborate stories to absolve yourself of blame. But I'm not fooled. I've seen women like Evelyn before, manipulative and cunning, preying on unsuspecting men like you. The venom in her words pierced me to the core leaving me reeling in disbelief. And as she declared her intention to seize control of our finances, my heart sank. It was a final, crushing blow, a stark reminder of the depths to which our relationship had plummeted. Faced with my wife's unreasonable demands, I stood firm in my refusal to relinquish control of my personal finances. I reminded her of our prior agreement, emphasizing that we had already established a system that included a joint account for shared expenses, alongside separate accounts for personal spending. It was a reasonable arrangement that had served us well until now, and I had no intention of deviating from it. Yet my wife remained resolute in her distrust, 
convinced that Evelyn's ulterior motive was financial gain. In her eyes, my refusal to comply with her demands was a betrayal of trust, a failure to recognize the gravity of the situation. She argued vehemently, insisting that she was merely safeguarding our financial stability, oblivious to the strain her actions were placing on our relationship. As the argument escalated, I turned to my son and his wife, hoping to enlist their support. But to my dismay, they seemed swayed by my wife's impassioned pleas, their faith in her assertions undermining my own credibility. It was a bitter realization, leaving me feeling isolated and defeated. The confrontation with my wife continued long after my son's family had departed, each accusation and counter-argument escalating the tension between us. With each passing moment, it became increasingly clear that there would be no resolution without drastic action. In a final act of defiance, I issued an ultimatum. Starting tomorrow, my wife would assume responsibility for Robbie's care. No more excuses, no more false accusations. It was time for her to step up and fulfill her duties as a grandmother or face the consequences of her actions. As expected, my wife vehemently refused to entertain the notion of relenting, adamant in her insistence that I remain at home with Robbie under her watchful eye. The depths to which she stooped, using our own grandchild as a pawn in her accusations, left me feeling utterly disheartened. It was a betrayal of trust on a level I never could have imagined, and the weight of it bore down heavily on my shoulders. To be falsely accused of infidelity was a blow to my sense of self, shattering the image of the peaceful retirement I had envisioned. Even in the hypothetical scenario of an actual affair, the turmoil it wrought would pale in comparison to the upheaval caused by baseless accusations. My sanity felt fragile, teetering on the brink of collapse as I grappled with the surreal reality of my situation. Little did I know, the tumultuous events surrounding the fabricated affairs would soon be overshadowed by an even more unexpected revelation. Nearly two months later, my wife, at the age of 50, discovered she was pregnant. The news came as a shock to both of us, unfolding amidst the chaos of our fractured relationship. Her realization came belatedly, at 16 weeks into her pregnancy, prompted by irregularities in her menstrual cycle and a familiar feeling of sickness reminiscent of her previous pregnancies. A visit to the doctor confirmed what she had suspected. She was indeed expecting. In the midst of our strained communication and fractured intimacy, the news of her pregnancy introduced a new layer of complexity to our already tumultuous dynamic. Our relationship had deteriorated to the point where meaningful conversation was a rarity, replaced by an uneasy silence that hung heavily between us. Yet, amidst this emotional distance, there was a fleeting moment of unexpected closeness. A solitary instance where she reached out to me, her gesture a stark contrast to the years of estrangement that had preceded it. It was a gesture so out of place, so unexpected, that it served as a stark reminder of the tangled web of emotions that bound us together, despite the rift that had grown between us. I was taken aback by my wife's sudden change in demeanor. Her advances, unexpected and out of character, stirred a mixture of emotions within me. Despite my initial resistance, I found myself unable to resist the allure, giving in to the temptation that had long been absent from my marriage. What followed was a night of passion unlike any I had experienced with my wife in years. It was a fervent rekindling of intimacy, a flame that had long been extinguished now roaring back to life with an intensity I hadn't felt in ages. Then, about a month later, my wife woke me from a deep slumber with a whispered confession. She was pregnant. The revelation struck me like a bolt of lightning, disbelief mingling with astonishment as I struggled to comprehend the implications. Pregnant at your age? I sputtered incredulously, my mind reeling with the thought of impending fatherhood at the age of 60. But my wife's laughter, tinged with amusement, served as a sobering reminder of the reality before us. With a gentle rebuke, she reminded me that age was but a number, reassuring me that women of her age were more than capable of bearing children. And as she recounted our passionate night together, her words carried a weight of truth that I couldn't deny. Despite my initial skepticism, I couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement at the prospect of welcoming a new addition to our family. The thought of nurturing another child, of witnessing their growth and development, filled me with a sense of joy that eclipsed any doubts or concerns. As I reflected on the situation, I realized that the timing of this unexpected blessing mattered little in the grand scheme of things. Whether at 50 or 60, a child deserved nothing less than unconditional love and care. And as I embraced the prospect of fatherhood once more, I knew that I was ready to pour my heart and soul into this new chapter of our lives, regardless of what others may think. Turning to my wife, 
I offered some gentle advice, realizing the importance of her well-being during this pivotal time. You need to take extra good care of yourself now, I urged. Even though you're not too old to have a baby, it doesn't mean you're as young and energetic as before. Let's make sure we attend your upcoming doctor appointment together. I'm eager to see how our new little blessing is progressing. About a month later, we found ourselves at the doctor's office for the next appointment, where the ultrasound revealed that everything was progressing smoothly with the baby. It was my first time witnessing such a momentous occasion, and the sight of our child on the screen filled me with a mix of awe and disbelief. As my wife wiped off the ultrasound gel, I couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder at the miracle unfolding before us. Turning to the doctor, I couldn't help but voice my concerns about the unique circumstances of our pregnancy. I'm absolutely thrilled about this late-in-life addition to our family, I began, but it also comes with a hint of worry. Is it safe for us to have a due date at our age? Are there any precautions we should be mindful of given our circumstances? Are there any general things we should be aware of or anticipate? The doctor listened attentively before providing some reassurance. I can't provide an exact date until your next checkup, she explained. But if I were to estimate right now, I'd say sometime in the last few days of August or early September. Her words brought a sense of relief, tempered by the realization of the responsibilities that lay ahead. Expressing my gratitude to the doctor and the nurses, we made our way back home, where I immediately marked the tentative due date on the calendar. As I began to compile a comprehensive list of tasks to prepare for the baby's arrival, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. As March unfolded, I couldn't shake off the gnawing unease that lingered in my mind. Our intimate night had taken place just a month earlier, yet the doctor's estimation of the due date in August seemed perplexingly premature. How could our baby's arrival be projected for a mere six months later? It defied all logical expectations. Bringing up my concerns with my wife only resulted in her reassurances that such timelines weren't uncommon for women of her age. It's not unusual, she insisted for pregnancies at my age to have earlier due dates. But even with her explanations, the pieces of the puzzle didn't quite fit together. A due date just seven months away raised red flags, hinting at potential complications or emergencies. Driven by a growing sense of doubt, I revisited the doctor to delve deeper into this discrepancy. Expressing my puzzlement, I recounted the timeline of events and voiced my concerns about the unexpectedly early due date. The doctor's response only added to the confusion. He reassured me that, for now, the baby appeared to be healthy and my wife was indeed in her 16th week of pregnancy. However, he noted, there was a possibility that the baby might arrive even earlier than anticipated if the progression continued as it was. His words hit me like a bolt of lightning, dispelling any lingering doubts. It suddenly dawned on me. The timeline didn't align. How could my wife be 16 weeks pregnant when our night together had occurred just a month ago. The realization struck me with the force of a revelation, leaving me reeling with a mix of disbelief and apprehension. As I made my way back home, a heavy feeling settled over me, weighing down my every thought. It was as if the ground beneath me had shifted, leaving me adrift in a sea of uncertainty. As the doctor's words resonated with me, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. It dawned on me that my wife's irrational behavior her unfounded accusations, and her sudden pregnancy might all be connected. Could it be that her accusations against me were driven by her own guilt or desire to retaliate? The next day, while caring for our grandson, I seized a moment of privacy to confront her about my suspicions. She asked me to play a song for our grandson using my phone, highlighting my supposed lack of knowledge in modern technology. As she busied herself with the task, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. When she left the room, I saw an opportunity to investigate further. With a mix of trepidation and determination, I unlocked her phone and began to sift through her recent activity. My heart pounded as I scrolled through her call history and text messages, searching for any clues that might confirm my suspicions. And there it was, a name that sent a chill down my spine, Daniel. Intrigued and anxious, I delved into their conversation. Their exchanges were filled with discussions about the baby, including a photo of an ultrasound. But it was one message in particular that sent shockwaves through me. Daniel's concern about my wife having a baby at her age mirrored my own, yet her response was chillingly composed. I'm fully committed to having this baby and raising it on my own, she assured him. Don't worry, there's no need for concern. I've already informed my husband about everything. We can discuss the details more when we meet face to face. 
As I entered the butcher shop, the sense of urgency intensified with each passing moment. My heart raced as I scanned the room, searching for any sign of my wife. To my surprise, the shop appeared deserted, despite having seen her enter just moments ago. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I approached the counter, where the butcher hastily emerged from the back, still in the process of donning his uniform. His puzzled expression mirrored my own confusion as I explained the reason for my unexpected visit. I'm here to find someone, not to buy meat, I stated firmly, my voice tinged with urgency. Before the butcher could respond, I caught sight of my wife peeking out from what appeared to be an office. Our eyes locked in a moment of silent recognition, but before I could react, she hastily retreated, closing the door behind her. Driven by a mixture of confusion and determination, I wasted no time in pushing open the door to the office, the sound of jingling bells echoing through the room as I entered. Inside I found my wife lying on a bed, covered by a blanket. My initial shock gave way to a surge of questions and demands as I confronted her about the situation. What's going on? I demanded, my voice betraying a mix of anger and disbelief. Come out here, I insisted, urging her to face me and provide an explanation for her actions. Meanwhile, the butcher, clearly taken aback by the sudden turn of events, interjected with his own inquiries, his voice rising in confusion and concern. Who are you? He questioned, his eyes darting between me and my wife. Fueled by a need for answers, I turned to my wife, waiting for her to emerge from her hiding place and confront the reality of the situation unfolding before us. As my wife emerged from the room, her explanation only added to my confusion and frustration. I came here to buy some meat and then somehow ended up in this room, she offered, her words failing to provide any clarity to the situation. That doesn't make sense, I retorted, my voice laced with disbelief. You need to come out and bring Robbie home immediately. Once she left the room, leaving me alone with the butcher, I turned my attention to him, my tone stern and unwavering. What's really going on here? I demanded, my eyes boring into his as I sought the truth. Don't even try to lie. I'm aware that my wife is pregnant with your child. If you don't tell me the truth, I'll call my son down here, and we'll get the answers out of you one way or another. The butcher hesitated, clearly weighing his options before finally relenting and offering an explanation. He revealed that my wife had been a regular customer at his shop, and over time, they had developed a close bond. He confessed that he had been married before but got divorced not long ago and my wife had been a source of support for him during this difficult period. Their connection had deepened over time, culminating in my wife's pregnancy. He admitted that he hadn't planned for things to escalate to this point, and acknowledged that he was in a relationship with another woman whom he had considered marrying. However, the news of my wife's pregnancy had thrown his plans into disarray, leaving him uncertain about the future. As I absorbed his words, a mix of emotions washed over me, anger, betrayal, and a profound sense of disappointment. As I recounted the tumultuous tale to my daughter-in-law, every word carried the weight of years of suppressed anguish and betrayal. With each detail revealed, I felt a sense of liberation mixed with the crushing weight of reality crashing down upon me. In the midst of the chaos, my daughter-in-law's expression mirrored my own disbelief, her eyes wide with shock and incredulity. The truth hung heavy in the air, casting a pall over the once familiar confines of our home. I confessed to her the inner turmoil that had plagued me for years, the countless nights spent wrestling with suspicions and doubts, all while clinging desperately to the tattered remnants of a marriage built on shaky ground. It was a raw admission of vulnerability, a testament to the profound impact of my wife's betrayal. With a heavy heart, I admitted that I had reached my breaking point. Enduring my wife's deception and manipulation had taken its toll, eroding the foundation of trust upon which our marriage once stood. The prospect of divorce loomed large, a daunting yet necessary step toward reclaiming my sense of self-worth and dignity. Amidst the wreckage of our shattered marriage, I couldn't help but feel a pang of empathy for my wife. Despite the hurt and betrayal she had inflicted upon me, I couldn't bring myself to harbor resentment. Instead, I saw her as a victim of her own deceit, trapped in a web of lies of her own making. As my daughter-in-law processed the gravity of the situation, I shared one final revelation the butcher's intentions to marry the other woman he had been involved with. While I was sharing my thoughts, my wife, seemingly unaware of the butcher's intentions to marry the other woman, was eavesdropping from the other room. Her reaction was immediate. She dialed the butcher, and I couldn't help but overhear her pleading voice. She reminded him of their promises, their plans to build a life together once the baby arrived, and she got divorced. 
Her candid conversation played out in front of my daughter-in-law, laying bare the truth of our situation. The confrontation eventually led to our divorce, a decision made in the wake of her infidelity and deceit. In the months that followed, she gave birth to the baby, but it seemed that the butcher's commitment to her was not as strong as she had believed. Rumors swirled about his ongoing relationship with the other woman, casting a shadow over my wife's newfound status as a single mother. It was a harsh reality for her to face at 50, left to navigate the challenges of parenthood without the support she had expected. This turn of events left her adrift, unsure of her next steps. While many find solace in the settled rhythms of life, my wife sought control and fulfillment in ways that ultimately led to her downfall. Yet, amidst the chaos, I found peace in spending time with my grandson, cherishing the simple joys of everyday life. As I reflect on the journey we've been on, I'm grateful for the opportunity to move forward on my own terms. Legal proceedings against the butcher are underway, holding him accountable for his role in our marital breakdown. Looking ahead, I intend to continue caring for my grandson until he's ready for preschool, and then, perhaps, embark on a new chapter with a partner who shares my zest for life's adventures. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey. May you all find happiness and fulfillment in your own paths.